Okey, start. Okey, baik. Ya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan selamat pagi, selamat datang semua kepada peserta-peserta uh, bagi kursus PhD in the making series PhD is real, make it happen. Okey, alhamdulillah kita sangat betul pada pagi ini dapat bersama dengan uh, online CPD ya, dalam tempoh kita PKP ini berada di rumah kita terus laksanakan tugas kita dalam bidang pendidikan dengan menyampaikan ilmu-ilmu yang uh, sangat berguna terutama kepada para pendidik lah dan alhamdulillah pada pagi ini kita bersama-sama dengan Dr Hasna binti Abdullah uh, ketua Taspas Akib G ya, pesara kanan di IPG Kampus Raja Melewa Seremban Okay, dan bagi memulakan dan memberkati uh, sesi kita pada pagi ini mari sama-sama kita mulakan dengan membaca umur kitab Al-Fatihah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Maliki yaumitin iya kena kuduba iya kena sa'in idina siratan mustaqim siratan lazina an'amta alaihim wa irul ma'udubi alaihim wa latadim amin Alhamdulillah tuan-tuan uh, dan puan-puan uh, kita uh, bersama dengan Dr. Asnah untuk sesi perkongsian pada pagi ini dan kita boleh nampak uh, video di, di depan tu muka Dr. Asnah nak, nak sama dengan muka dalam poster tu nampak muda lagi uh, <laughs> I am, I am Ya yeah, betul <laughs> dan kita uh, Jelas tak suara Bendy? Yes, uh, audio clear, visual clear Okay Okay jadi Uh, I mean thumbs up. Jadi kita ada 52 peserta. Selamat datang kepada semua. Jadi tanpa membuang masa uh, saya dengan ini menyerahkan sesi kepada Dr. Asnah untuk menjelaskan lebih lanjut apa nak buat okay. dengan PhD. <laughs> Silakan. Okay. Terima kasih kepada KU uh, latihan dalam perkhidmatan uh, IPG Raja Melewa ataupun SUN akan dikenali sebagai Akademi Kecemerlangan Institut Pendidikan Guru yang sangat cemerlang yang sentiasa bersama untuk membantu merealisasikan semua uh, CPD apa ni semua online CPD uh, bukan sahaja dalam tempoh PKP juga di waktu-waktu normal biasa ya. So uh, pagi ni kita akan um, bersama-sama dengan saya selama dua jam dan uh, kita akan bercakap tentang uh, how to make a PhD tu jadi betul-betul. It is not an only a dream but we have we can make it happen. Okay, so kalau kita perhatikan dekat keliling kita, dekat tempat kerja ke, dekat mana ke ada ada ramai rakan-rakan kita yang ada PhD so uh, why not kita uh, mendaftarkan diri kita become one of them in the future Okay, so uh, welcome Hana Okay, so uh, kita uh, di akhirnya nanti sebenarnya deep inside me uh, saya ingin semua yang ada dalam sini ya, yang dapat mengikuti ini akhirnya akan uh, memperolehi PhD itu selewat-lewatnya pada tahun 2026 maknanya uh, I'm giving you another six years to think about it, to work it out and to make it happen and uh, again I would like to emphasize uh, PhD is real okay? dia bukannya satu um, mimpi, nightmare ataupun apa but it is real. Okay. So tuan-tuan uh, 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 dan perempuan, rakan-rakan semua nampak kan ada, ada saya bentangkan dekat sini. These are my phone number and also my email address. And if, if should you have any, any <coughs> If you have anything that you think you want me to assist you, you are most uh, welcome. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, seperti biasa, kita nak tahu actually. Uh, 
kalau ada di antara yang datang ni dah ada pun PhD, you can always uh, be with me and you can always give input and rakan-rakan yang lain juga, uh, you are most uh, welcome and open for discussion, okay. So, janganlah biarkan saya sorang-sorang aja cakap dekat sini because I would love to hear uh, voices, I would love to hear um, sharing and whatever you have with you and uh, maybe whatever you share here uh, can also uh, be very very meaningful and helpful to others okay so um, what is phd okay uh, everybody other definitions need what is phd yeah Semua ada definisi de, definisi definisi sendiri. What is PhD? So um, dekat sini, I would say that uh, PhD is the most important degree in the world. Okay, tu kita kena ingat. Kita datang dekat sini bersama dengan saya pagi ni kena ada azam dalam diri kita bahawa 2026 saya akan dapat PhD saya. Okay, because why PhD is perhaps the most important degree in the world. I'm not talking about anything else but in the realm of educational world. Okay, uh, dalam horizon pendidikan. Okay, um, I would like to share with you my experience. Okay, when I was only 21 years old and I was in the United States at, uh, at that time about my final year during my first degree, I told my husband I was married at that time as early as 21 years old. Okay, I told my husband that um, by the age 30, uh, by the age of 35 or by the age of 30, I must work out my PhD. I must start my PhD. And believe it or not, I was only 21 years old at that time. Okay. So, uh, pada masa saya bercita-cita itu, saya tak tahu pun rupanya PhD ni macam mana tapi uh, I was thinking that uh, dengan izin Allah, kalau saya hidup pada the 21st century, PhD is a must. Satu benda yang wajib sebagai seorang Educator sebagai seorang pendidik saya mewajibkan diri saya untuk ada PhD. Okay, so uh, bila dah ada cita-cita macam tu, maka sekelilingnya akan jadi lain. Okay, okay. So nanti kita akan sambung lagi ya. Okay, what is PhD again? It is the most valuable asset that an inspiring academician can have. Macam saya cakap tadi, because I, I'm thinking of, I, I have 1000% uh, patient in education, um, in becoming an educator. So I think that to live, to survive in the 21st century and beyond, other PhD too is a wajib, is a must. Okay, so... Uh, PhD research will help to improve your abilities to understand, okay, and solve problem, increase your confidence, make yourself a better communicator, and gain skills that may lead to a better job, even in many fields apart from academics. This is very true, okay. I am speaking on behalf of my own experience, okay. Um, 20 years ago, I was, I was a different person, okay. I was a different person in a way that I belum dapat PhD lagi. So uh, the way I look at things is different. The way I understand things is different. Um, the way I solve problem, the way uh, my confidence level, semuanya berbeza. Okay, I strongly believe that the PhD pro, uh, process has uh, made me what I am now. Okay. Siapa saya sekarang ni, saya sangat yakin adalah disebabkan kerja-kerja PhD saya. Okay, so everybody here kena sentiasa betulkan niat, okay, uh, uh, kuatkan azam ya, uh, bahawa 2026 kita, kita ada PhD. Okay, so uh, again, uh, improve your ability to understand 
you can make uh, you can make judgement by looking at your colleagues around you uh, dengan melihat kawan-kawan yang ada di sekeliling kita dan kita kadang-kadang dapat membezakan antara seorang yang ada PhD dengan yang belum ada PhD lagi uh, bila dia bercakap tu dia ada lain sikit okey uh, the way we solve problem the way we look at things increase your confidence make yourself a better communicator and gain skills that may lead to a better job Cumanya kita ni dalam pendidikan yang ber, berstatuskan DG Dia tak ada sistem you ada PhD ke, you ada master ke, you naik satu grade, tak ada Okay, cumanya kita ada skim siswaza dan bukan siswaza Tapi kita dapat lihat begitu ramainya cikgu-cikgu yang berstatuskan DG ni Pergi melanjutkan pelajaran termasuklah saya Okay, so dekat situ jelas bahawa There is something that yang kita nak bila kita buat PhD. It is not only uh, state uh, title, tapi something yang it is very difficult to explain. Only the person yang lalu i yang tahu, okay? And uh, next, uh, it is the foundation that can lead to the publishing of papers, definitely awarding of grants and other kinds of recognition uh, by your peers, okay? So uh, from my experience, I would say that. Uh, ada PhD ni sangat seronok sebab orang suka dengar kita okay so so far okey lah okey 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 so uh, okay. people keep on coming okey alright so the next question is what okey so is there anybody would like to share with me with the first question what ada tak sesiapa nak mencelah ke apa tu PhD yang you faham yang you bawa pagi ni ada tak sesiapa yang nak bagi pendapat sikit Ada Okey Uh, Muhammad Zakaria, you want to say something? Uh, saya baru masuk ni, Doktor. Jadi okay, saya okay. Tak, tak tahu lagi apa yang Doktor sampai. <laughs> saya sedang tanya kalau ada siapa-siapa nak bagi, kalau ada dalam fikiran dia, uh, what is uh, PhD tu, ya? Yeah? Oh, saya okay. saya baru masuk jadi tak, tak dapat. Alright, alright, alright. Tak apa, tak apa. Okay. Okay, ada sesiapa? Okay, kalau tak ada, kita proceed to the next one. Why? Kenapa nak buat PhD ni? Okay, after we uh, after we have understand, after I have presented my work just now. So next ialah why? Kenapa kita nak buat PhD? Kalau kita nak senaraikan, it will be a never ending list. Okay, it will be a never ending list where everybody can put whatever reason you want. Okay. So dekat sini saya senaraikan a few lah ya. Yeah. Ada orang dia buat PhD uh, sekarang ni bila saya go through all my slides ni kita sama-sama tanya diri kita. Okay, where am I? Okay, apa saya? Berbanding dengan apa yang saya bentangkan. Okay, so uh, stop me if you have any question. Okay, ada orang dia nak buat PhD because you want to achieve something significant. Okay. Contohnya macam ada kawan kita, Amin tu ha, dia ada benda dia nak tengok dalam counselling Dia nak buat benda tu you, you are very clear with what you want Okay, you nak ketengahkan apa yang ada dalam fikiran you Okay, so you nak buat PhD Okay, to learn, to discover something new Definitely, okay, PhD dia adalah satu contribution to a new knowledge Walaupun cuma setitik sahaja As long as you contribute something, then that is PhD. Biarlah orang kata PhD ni bendanya kecil je. Dia kaji seorang dua je. Kalau kualitatif kan, dah dapat PhD. Okay, tak kisah. Kita abaikan aja. As long as we are doing PhD with a proper supervision, with a proper organization, institution, university. Okay, so kita tak perlu bimbang. Right? Okay, so uh, next, uh, ada orang dia buat PhD because of self-improvement. Okay, uh, 
I I would emphasize here eh, uh, kita kena jadi sangat positif. We have to be very positive. Okay, uh, biarlah kita put aside apa orang nak kata. Alah dia tu nak buat PhD tu sebab nak lawan uh, this and this lah ni. Uh, biarlah orang nak kata apa pun. Yang penting sekali apa Amin? Kita dapat uh, PhD kita. Okay. So, uh, um, ada orang pun uh, self-improvement, uh, improve dia punya kehidupan. Ya, yeah, saya tahu ada student saya kat dalam ni, Siti Nurjana, dia baru je habis uh, PDPP dengan saya. Dia uh, sedang buat PhD dia, dia dah tunjuk dengan saya kerja dia dan um, percayalah Nurjana dan juga rakan-rakan yang lain bahawa the moment you obtain your PhD, your life is totally different. It's, it is more than 360 degrees. Okay, macam saya keep on cakap tadi, um, kalau you jumpa saya 30 tahun yang lalu, I was totally a different person. Not in terms of the physical aspect, but in terms of the way I understand things, the way I solve problems, the confidence level and whatever. Okay, it will be very nice kalau ada somebody yang saya jumpa 30 tahun dulu, now dia ada dalam ni and she or he, that person can explain how different am I now. Okay, so ah ni. Sebab yang seterusnya ni, thirst of knowledge. Ya yeah, ke tu? I mean, betul ke? Dahagakan ilmu. <laughs> okay, so I hope yes. Um, dahagakan ilmu ni yang uh, will maneuver you, will will motivate you. Okay, dia hampir sama macam you have something in mind that you want to prove it. Okay, so therefore you have to find ways to explain to the world, okay, and also to fulfill your satisfaction by doing your PhD because in your PhD you are trying to prove something, you are trying to work out something, okay. Next one, selepas kita ni dahagakan ilmu, yeah, uh, insatiable appetite for reading books about particular topics. Wah, nanti saya tunjukkan ada satu slide, yeah. Uh, ada tak siapa-siapa dekat sini berkata uh, dia berada dalam situasi ni, insatiable, maknanya apa Hana, suruh suruh ni, insatiable ni maknanya uh, kalau makan sambal belacan tu colik aja, sikit, lepas tu nak lagi. Maknanya apa eh, uh, what, uh, what it means in Malay macam tak, tak, tak puas hati, tak, uh, apa nak lagi, nak lagi, nak lagi. Yes, uh, yes, you okay. want more, yeah, dia tak kenyang. Mm -hmm. Uh -uh. So, uh, how many of you would say that uh, bila saya tanya soalan tu jawab sendirilah ya because um, for your information, I forget to introduce uh, myself, okay. Uh, I did my degree in economics dekat Amerika. My uh, second degree was uh, MBA and then uh, PhD saya pada asalnya saya buat um, private education uh, dalam subtopic marketing. Okay, tapi along the way, I change. 360 degrees, I tukar. Okay, nanti kita akan tahu kenapa jadi macam tu. Okay, so uh, akhirnya saya tukar, saya buat 100% purely philosophy. Okay, you can imagine uh, daripada seorang uh, science students. Okay, kemudian saya buat economics, saya buat MBA dan akhirnya saya end up dengan... Um, Philosophy dan nak menyatakan lagi, I end up with Islamic education philosophy. Okay, so uh, so uh, kalau kita dah ada dekat stage uh, insatiable ni, uh, that is a good sign. Okay, tapi kita ni rata-rata insatiable of nasi, eh, Anna? Uh, something sweet. <coughs> okay. Uh, Next one is a lifelong um, fascination, obsession, something significant. Okay, macam kenapa saya tukar dulu because uh, bila saya go through the uh, private education ni, uh, the condition, the situation at that time, okay, that was in nine, uh, 2000, early 2000, okay, I was very, very uh, um, 
disappointed with the uh, condition of private education at the moment, uh, at that moment. So uh, I was asking myself, uh, what is going on with the education in the country? What is going on? What is going on? Bila saya keep on asking question ataupun apa kita panggil teknik tu, uh, Socratic method kan, uh, dah ada dekat dalam diri saya and it is very philosophical. Okay, so akhirnya saya terjun ke dalam uh, falsafah. Okay, uh, so this is the one to contribute to new knowledge. Okay, why kita buat PhD, ada orang dia memang nak contribute to the new knowledge and it is the rule of doing PhD. You like it or not, contribute to a new knowledge is priority. Okay, <clears throat> and next ialah essential qualification. Okay, again, macam I cakap, to become an educator, we have, kita wajibkan diri kita uh, ada uh, PhD. Okay, um, right, next one. Demonstrate intellectual potential. Okay, uh, uh, sekarang cuba semua orang fikirkan rakan-rakan yang dah ada PhD tu ya, Be positive dengan rakan-rakan yang dah ada PhD tu uh, Can you tell that uh, they most of the time they demonstrate intellectual potential Kita kita yang belum ada PhD ni whatever it is Kita kena respect orang yang ada PhD At least dia tidak dia sudah melalui proses itu Okay, so sebenarnya orang yang ada PhD ni, dia memang boleh demonstrate intellectual potential. Okay. Um, dan juga kita buat PhD ni because of intellectual curiosity. As a result of you want to contribute to a new knowledge, you also have intellectual curiosity. Okay, and last but not the least listed here, enjoying academic environment okay uh, my experience doing phd for four years saya buat phd empat tahun sebab setahun tu saya berhenti uh, stagnant because of something happened empat tahun tu when i got back to the uh, working uh, life masa tu lah saya rasa how i wish i have to go back to the uh, university uh, environment because dekat university Kalau kita marah dengan buku, kita baling aja buku tu. Buku tu tak marah kita pun. But at workplace, you have to deal with so many people. Selamat datang, Riz. Okay. Betul tak? Eh, saya nampak Amin ngangguk-ngangguk tu. Yelah tu dia kalau marah, dia baling buku. Okay. So, uh, because you enjoy academic environment, that is a very positive signal. Okay, if you enjoy being on the campus, you enjoy uh, surrounded with people, with books, with articles, with journals, then that is a very, very uh, positive um, signal for you to uh, pursue your PhD. Okay. Makes As you feel young, doctor. Hmm? Makes you feel young because surrounded by young people. Yes, believe it or not. Sekarang ni I rasa young sangat sebab I tahu yang ada dalam ni ada 84 orang ni adik-adik je. <laughs> okay. Tak uh, uh, So saya rasa saya sangat muda. Ya. Yeah? <laughs> saya saya tak rasa orang ada orang um, lebih apa? Lebih tua daripada saya. I am so happy to announce that I am the most senior in this room. Okay, uh, pada waktu ini uh, kita sangat berbangga kita jadi orang tua yang um, yang dah ada PhD. Uh, okay, alright. Uh, do you want to share anything with me before I proceed to the next one? When? Uh, janganlah pula kalau betul-betul ada yang dah lebih tua daripada saya tu rasa dia uh, rasa tercabar lah pula kan. Okay, tak ada. So, uh, tadi kita dah tengok what is PhD. Lepas tu saya senaraikan a few. Bukan habis dekat situ ya. Yeah. There are so many many other things that you want 
uh, want to do your PhD, why people want to do their PhD. Yeah? Uh, uh, ada seorang tu baru 40, dia tak tahu. I mean, saya umur berapa? Hana, saya umur berapa? Ya? Yeah? Uh, right. So, uh, bila agaknya kita nak buat PhD ni? Uh, ni seronok ni kalau kita bincang ni ya. Uh, nantilah um, age is not the limit actually. Age is never never a limit. Okay. Satu pengalaman yang saya tak boleh lupakan ialah ketika saya buat PhD tu, uh, saya dah graduate, a few years after that, I heard that one of my um, one of my friend um, dia meninggal Dia meninggal uh, Just a day before the commencement Just a day before the convocation Okay Ya Hana, H is only the number Okay, H is only the number Be it you are in your 30s You are 40s, you are 50s There is no limit In terms of age For you to do your uh, PhD Okay That's why I tell you, Doctor, not age limit for our education. That's why you look very young. Yes. Tengok, Siva pun kata saya very young. Dia terpaksa kata saya very young. Sebab apa? Hari-hari jumpa dia, saya akan tanya, Siva, how's your PhD? Betul tak, Siva? Yes. Yes, you are right. You are a very good role model for our IPG campus, <laughs> Rajan. <Rajin. Okay. laughs> Thank you for that compliment. All right. So, bear in mind. Okay, age is never, never a limit. Okay, it just happened that saya muda. Right, masa saya dianugerahkan biaya siswa tu, saya masih muda. Okay, so bagi rakan-rakan uh, yang walaupun dah berumur 50 dekat sini, please, uh, uh, please proceed. Okay, dan uh, saya nak share juga dekat sini di mana uh, masa saya buat degree, I was only 18 years old. I was in US already. Okay. And then saya balik umur 21 tahun. Okay. Uh, umur 21 tahun tu, saya balik, saya dah ada degree. Kemudian uh, uh, the, the following year tu, saya pergi buat uh, diploma. And then after uh, four years in school di Terengganu, saya dapat biasiswa sepenuhnya daripada JPA untuk pergi buat um, uh, apa uh, master's degree. Okay, kemudian um, kejap eh, komputer lagi satu saya mati. Kejap. Okay, kemudian um, saya uh, balik daripada master's, uh, tak servis pun lagi, just a few months. Uh, saya apply untuk buat PhD dan terus dapat sepenuh masa dengan JPA. So I I, I felt so indebted to the country, to the nation because uh, biasiswa yang saya gunakan tu, this is I punya uh, falsafah lah ya, my principle. Um, saya menggunakan daripada degree, diploma, master's, PhD, semuanya duit rakyat. It's the taxpayer money. So uh, saya ber mewajibkan diri saya untuk membayar balik uh, kepada the people, for the people dalam bentuk macam ni. Okay, so uh, memanglah saya graduate cepat sebab saya dapat cepat. Okay, uh, ada orang kata uh, habis saja masters, you have to serve. Tapi saya tidak indahkan uh, peraturan itu sebab bagi saya no harm kalau kita apply. Uh, dan suami saya kata kalau you tak apply, you will be the first one to know you are not accepted. Okay, so with that principle, I apply dan Alhamdulillah saya terus dapat. Okay, dan saya terus dapat uh, macam biasa, you all tahulah ada orang kata saya guna kabel lah apalah padahal uh, itu semua adalah rezeki untuk saya. So, saya dapat uh, biasiswa sepenuh masa and I was re representing Terengganu at that time because there is no, there was no candidate from Terengganu doing PhD. Apply for PhD. So, saya uh, gunakan vote Terengganu. Ada orang Terengganu tak dekat sini. So, uh, saya gunakan kota Terengganu actually. Okay. 
Sekejap ya. Sekejap ya, saya butuhkan ini. Isteri saya orang tengah anu kata. Oh ya ke? Ah, isteri saya orang tengah anu. Orang dungun. Oh orang dungun? Ya ah, dungun. Saya saya duduk dungun lama tau. Saya di sekolah menengah Sultan Omar dungun. Oh. Oh mak isteri saya dekat bandar tu je. Dekat hospital. Oh okey okey okey. Okey. Alright, uh, sementara saya betulkan balik setup ni, ada sesiapa nak beri pendapat ke tentang umur? Okey, awak nampak tak paparan? Belum, belum nampak. Okey, so uh, kejap ya. Eh. Saya alright. Ah, ni nampak tak? Belum lagi. Andu eh. Nampak tak? Belum belum. Okey, andu eh. Okey, dah. Alright. Komputer lagi satu dia dah buat hal. Okey. So, okay, kita dekat mana tadi? Dekat when kan? Uh, when, so, when. H. Alright. Um, masa saya masa saya mengajar di OUM pun, saya ada student yang paling tua sekali umurnya 68. Okay. Tak ada masalah. Okay. So, uh, itu dari segi umur. So, umur bukanlah jadi satu penghalang. Okay, the next point ialah certain achievement in career. Uh, oh, I next year dapat DG44. Uh, I tangguh dululah nak pergi buat PhD. Uh, uh, I lagi dua tahun nak 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 apa 48. Uh, lagi setahun nak 52. Okay, memanglah penting tapi um, again saya katakan uh, You nak mana? First thing first you apa? Okay, first thing first you apa? Yeah. Uh, that will uh, determine lah. Yeah. Okay, so ada orang kata uh, tunggu I kahwin dulu lah. Okay, I ada seorang kawan, dia kata dia nak uh, buat PhD masa dia kahwin nanti. Masa tu umur dia dah lima puluh. Uh, you can imagine. Okay, so ataupun oh Uh, because of marriage, because of uh, ni nak dapat anak ni uh, kita tunggu dululah lepas confinement ke, lepas dapat anak yang nombor dua ke, lepas dapat anak yang nombor tiga ke ya yeah? believe it or not, masa saya buat PhD saya mengandungkan anak yang ke-8 okay? uh, dan uh, beberapa, a few, a couple of months after I enroll dalam uh, program PhD tu saya melahirkan anak yang ke-8 okay. uh, lepas tu saya dapat anak ke-9, saya dapat anak ke-10, saya dapat anak ke-11 semuanya masa buat PhD and to share with you, I give birth to six children on campus okay. so uh, itu bagi saya, saya tak ada masalah yang itu sebab apa um, you 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 make yourself clear okay, what you want in your life okay, as early as the age of 21 okay, saya kata saya mesti ada uh, PhD so, I have to work it out okay, ha. degree satu anak, diploma satu anak, master satu anak, PhD dapat tiga. Ha, okay. So, um, bagi saya lah, it is not uh, 
satu masalah yang besar yang paling penting sekali ialah kekuatan dalaman kita okey kekuatan uh, dalaman kita yang uh, kita perlu ada sesiapa nak mencelah dekat sini Oh, dekat dalam ni muda-muda kan Amin. So, belum kahwin lagi kot. Ya. Yeah. Um. Ini dah tua. <laughs> Muhammad Zakaria dah tua ya? Dah lima lima dah tahun ni. Tak apa. Ha. Tak apa. <laughs> okay, age is not the limit, right? Okay, so uh, dan juga pengalaman saya lah. Anak-anak tu adalah yang membawa rezeki untuk kita dan for your information I lost two children masa saya buat PhD ok uh, tak tahulah saya nak katakan apa lagi ya yeah, sebab uh, when I gave birth to my uh, number eight I, I was only a few months after my enrollment for my PhD and uh, ada exam. I took a uh, structure, uh, structure B, coursework campur thesis. So, uh, dan setiap kali saya bersalin on campus, I only took 14 days ataupun 2 weeks off sahaja. Kemudian saya akan masuk uh, belajar balik. Okay. So, biasanya hari yang ke-15 tu adalah hari exam. Semua level saya lalui uh, memang uh, saya terpaksa hadapi. Okay, so Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alright. Ada orang dia nak buat PhD masa dah ada, dah beli rumah, nak beli kereta, macam-macam lah. Yeah, alasan. Yeah, alright. So, uh, next kita tengok. How? Ada dah faham dah nak pergi buat PhD, so how? Okay, nak pergi with or without scholarship. Nah, macam-macam nanti uh, apa nasihat yang kita dapat. Kalau you pergi dengan scholarship, you terikat. Betul tak? You are bonded. Kenapa nak risau uh, bonded? Sebab tujuan kita nak pergi buat PhD tu adalah untuk get knowledge, contribute to the new knowledge dan juga akhirnya serve the country, serve the nation give back to the people whatever yang uh, kita dah ambil sebab ada scholarship tu okay anybody would like to share adakah ianya satu uh, pilihan nak buat PhD ni nak ada scholarship ke tak nak tak nak ada PhD eh tak nak ada scholarship Okay, so uh, nasihat saya, if you are still young, you are still uh, qualified, You your age is not uh, reaching the expiration, maknanya kalau tak silap saya, kalau nak buat PhD, umur 44. Selamat datang Muzakir daripada Aceh ya. Um, uh, umur 44 dan juga untuk buat master saya rasa 46 ya. Yeah? So tak ada... Uh, Sepatutnya uh, yang yang paling penting sekali ialah scholarship ke tidak tu ialah the drive tadi dan juga kalau ada scholarship you don't worry of the uh, apa tu bond ataupun uh, apa nama tu perjanjian tu you nak pergi mana okay you nak pergi mana memang kita akan berada dalam pendidikan okay uh, lepas tu kita kena decide juga full time part time ke ya yeah? Bear in mind, saya uh, sangat menghargai orang yang graduate apabila dia buat PhD dia dengan uh, part time. I witness in front of me, my husband did it uh, part time. Okay, uh, as compared to full time. Orang part time dia akan kata bertuahnya orang full time. Okay, so kalau kita dapat beasiswa, we have to make sure kita benefit setiap uh, moment yang kita ada tu uh, untuk uh, habiskan pengajian kita. Okay, so here I also outline kan things to consider before embarking on a PhD. Okay, uh, number one, orang yang nak buat PhD ni, dia memang dah set mind dia, set mind tu dah settle, 
Okay, dan dia dah mula dah mencari bahan-bahan Actively seek information about PhD programs available Okay, for example, you nak buat dekat UKM, macam mana? Kalau nak buat dekat USM, macam mana? Apa dia punya requirement, requirement dia eh? Uh, somebody please switch off the microphone sebab saya tak nampak siapa Okay uh, ni kita tengok tu uh, function siapa tu eh nak ingatkan sekiranya perlu peningkatan puan munisa tak nampak siapa puan puan munisa ni doktor puan munisa mustafa Ah uh, okay, so uh, switch off the microphone eh, nanti kawan-kawan tak dengar ya. Yeah? Alright, uh, actively seek information about PhD program. You nak buat structure B, structure A, you nak buat dengan research university, you nak buat dengan teaching university. You actively seek information. You dah ada dah tanya-tanya orang. Okay, um, uh, kemudian maybe you have some uh, networking dengan professors, dengan lecturers yang ada dekat situ. Okay, so you must study the, uh, the nature of the program, the requirement from the university untuk you pursue your PhD. Okay, bear in mind juga, a PhD is not simply a continuation of undergraduate program. Maksudnya, oh hari tu I buat macam ni, so I nak buat uh, macam ni. Bukan I kata tak boleh, tapi uh, I tulis kat situ, it's not simply, bukan itu sahaja. Okay, dulu masa saya nak buat PhD, saya rasa uh, degree dengan master tu jauh. Okay, master dengan PhD ni macam satu langkah aja lagi. Tapi rupanya masters nak pergi ke PhD tu beribu-ribu langkah. Okay, so uh, again I would like to emphasize here, a PhD is not simply, is not simply, okay. Uh, a continuation of your undergraduate program. Okay, and then next, take a break between undergraduate to PhD. Oh, dia straight away, ramai orang akan sangat berbangga. Dia, bukan saya kata tak boleh, okay. Uh, uh, strongly, I strongly advise, take a break daripada kita buat undergraduate dengan uh, nak buat PhD tu, nak buat masters, kemudian nak buat PhD tu, take a break. Okay, jangan terus. Ya, yeah. uh, kenapa? Because PhD is is not the same way cara kita belajar masa kita buat degree. Even masa kita buat masters pun lain. Okay, because PhD is a very lonely journey. PhD is 100% on your own. Okay, okay next. Your current area of study does not dictate your PhD. Maknanya, Oh, I ni mengajar subjek ni. So, I nak uh, PhD I tu uh, dikawal oleh you punya kerja sekarang. Okay, no. That shouldn't happen. Okay, bila you nak buat PhD, you have to have to open up everything and ready to uh, receive anything to come in. Okay, next. Kita kena consider juga Uh, location. Okay. Dah tahu dah you duduk kat Kelantan, you pergi pilih UTM. Okay. So, location also you have to consider. Right. So, do you want to say anything about this? You are free to ask me now to share with me if you have any experience, you have uh, interesting experience that might benefit other people in this room. Is there anybody? Tak ada. Alright. So, kita pergi uh, the next one. Alright. Kita akan masuk kepada uh, getting started with a PhD. Okay. Kita fam, uh, kita dah decide kita nak buat PhD. Kita dah tahu universiti mana kita nak masuk. Kita dah ada bidangnya. Kita now kita dah nak start buat PhD. Okay. Number one. Familiarizing yourself with your new workplace and your new city. Okay, macam tadi daripada Kelantan dia pergi ke Johor Bahru. You have to adjust yourself. Okay, if should you have your family with you, I think the best thing is not to abandon your family in Kota Bahru, but took them, take them 
to Johobaru. Okay, uh, depends. This thing depends. Okay, uh, banyak faktor juga yang akan you uh, fikirkan kalau nak bawa family apa the positif and apa the negatif nak tukar sekolah anak anak dah nak pizza macam-macam kan okay so whatever it is you must make yourself comfortable with the new uh, place that you are uh, uh, doing your PhD okay discussing mutual expectation with your supervisor okay um, macam buat introduction buat ice breaking pergi jumpa pergi visit your uh, supervisor and uh, discuss dengan dia your uh, apa tu idea kasar kita uh, apa kita nak buat untuk uh, PhD kita okay so don't be surprised at the end of the day yang you cadang nak buat tu tak buat pun This is from my experience. Saya mula-mula nak buat marketing dalam uh, private education. I end up with uh, philosophy. Okay. Next, start documenting your journey. It will be very interesting. Start to write down every single thing happen along the way. Okay, you ada buku log, you ada diary you, okay. Kadang-kadang uh, uh, kita tak percaya ni, tapi please uh, uh, count on me, okay. Yang kita cakap tu tak akan dapat diulang sama macam yang pertama kali kita cakap. Okay, sebab tu bila kita berbincang dengan kawan-kawan kita, kita dapat idea record dia by all means record dia dengan secara audio secara video ataupun tulis because it will never be the same anymore okay menyesal kita alamak tadi dia cakap best tapi i don't have uh, access untuk untuk apa rakam ke untuk tulis ke apa ke okay uh, meaning you set up a research journal Ataupun kalau you orang fizik, orang chemistry, orang biologi Ataupun a lab book, okay Log your activities, okay And then uh, get ready how to start writing early on Alright, so again Ada sesiapa nak tambah dekat sini? Okay, kita pergi the next one It moves slip Mana Hana? Dia tagline dia ialah We are what we eat ha, Kita adalah apa yang kita makan ha, Betul Hana, Hana ada lagi kat sini? Ada, Alright. ada, betul <laughs> Okay, in this case Eat meaning uh, You tak boleh uh, Apa tu, uh, escape your meal You have to move You have to do exercises Okay, you have to get enough sleep Okay, enough food Okay Uh, so yang enough food ni tak ada masalah Okay <laughs> Yang nombor dua tu enough exercise Okay enough sleep Because sleep is very very important hmm, Kita rasa macam tak important but It is very important Let me share you uh, Share with you all How I counted my uh, sleeping hours Okay uh, I live in Seremban So I have to travel to Serdang Masa tu ada tiket RM5 um, pergi mana-mana, pergi balik, naik komuter. So I have to catch up pukul 9 punya komuter uh, untuk pergi ke Serdang. Okay. Pada masa tu, saya ada 8 orang anak dekat rumah. Okay. Every minute counts. Dalam komuter, saya akan target untuk baca dua jurnal. Right. So nanti bila balik rumah yang dua jurnal tadi yang sepatutnya saya baca tu dah tak payah baca. Or I decided to sleep. Ha, tapi dengan syarat ada alam lah kalau tidak kan terlepas kan. I decided to sleep dalam komuter sejam. So daripada enam jam, tujuh jam kita kena tidur tu I dah tolak satu jam sebab dah tidur dalam komuter. Okay, so it is very very important Kita jaga ni Makan, tidur dan juga exercise Tidur especially 
Okay, saya dah tidur dalam komputer satu jam. So, balik rumah, I have another five hours to sleep. Okay, so that is what are the, uh, what are the, uh, apa, the things that you have to have in you. Okay, you have to be very, very determined. Okay, next, exercises. Jangan tak buat exercise. Memang kita bila duduk depan komputer ni, kita akan duduk je. What happen? Kita duduk terlalu lama. Pada orang yang ada diabetik, ada high blood semua, that will affect you. Okay? So, you have to make some exercises. A light, light one. Tak payahlah pergi apa tu, uplifting apalah semua kan. Tapi, if you have the access to do exercise, please do. Okay? And then, um, determine your non-negotiable self-care activities. You suka sangat fishing, memancing. Tak boleh tidak. Dia macam addicted. Okay? If uh, that is the case, so, kalau normally you pergi memancing uh, three, four times, uh, apa nama, uh, per week, So, you you still maintain the activity but reduce it a little bit. Okay? Kalau you suka go to the cinema, so you still do that thing because you tak boleh tak buat but reduce it. The number of hours tu yang kita uh, reducekan. Okay? So, uh, next ialah make a rough outline of your days or in a week. Okay, uh, sample number one, uh, maybe satu hari tu you kata eight hours you nak buat PhD work. Macam mana you nak buat PhD work eight hours tu is up to you. It doesn't mean that you have to spend eight hours continuously. Sama juga macam sleep tadi. Saya sleep dalam komputer one hour. Dekat kampus I sleep another hour. So I have another four hours to sleep at home. Okay, sama juga macam ni, 8 hours PhD work, maybe 2 hours in the morning, 2 hours in the afternoon and another 4 hours in the evening. Okay, uh, kalau you commute, maybe 2 hours for commute. Okay, uh, zaman saya dulu, saya tak ada kereta nak pergi kampus tau. And I memang solely depends on the public transport. Masa tu susah, eh, gaji kecil. Ya, yeah? gaji kecil, anak ramai. So, ada kereta satu je berebut pula dengan suami yang nak pergi ke kampus juga kan, uh, pergi mengajar. So, the best is saya commute and we spend a lot of time, uh, waste a lot of time and anyway, uh, uh, tunggu commuter sometimes, commuter tu tergantung dekat labu sana for one hour, lepas tu delay semua kan. That's why saya punya strategi ialah I always have books, journals bersama dengan saya. Tapi sekarang ni, uh, keadaan dah lain. Everything ada dalam kita punya handphone. Okay? Everything ada dalam handphone. Kalau tiba-tiba komputer tu stuck ke banjir ke, we just buka handphone you. Masa zaman saya dulu tak ada. Okay, it's very difficult. Okay? Uh, two hours for exercise, including the time to get there and back, maknanya you buatlah exercise tu, maknanya pergi komputer tu berjalan, nak kejar bas ke, okay. So, one hour for reading. Ini awal-awal boleh lah, okay. Ataupun another uh, example, eight hours of his job. Ini kalau uh, tu, two hours commute, one hour workout at home and two hours PhD study. Okay. Maknanya dekat sini, uh, it is not that uh, you fix macam tu, but you ada disiplin. Okay. You ada disiplin uh, uh, tentang kerja you. Okay. Okay. Next, determining your milestone. Okay. Kalau HLP, dia bagi berapa lama? Tiga tahun. Okay. Tiga tahun. Right. Habis tiga tahun, you have to Uh, go back to your work unless you boleh tunjukkan you punya progress and approved by your professors, by your supervisory committee, then maybe you boleh sambung another uh, one year. Okay, so 
So you have to uh, you have to know the university. You have to know how many uh, years and you not spend. Okay, how many years does your program take? Okay, what are the graduation requirement? You can tahu. Nanti towards the end, alama tak buat lagi, tak boleh graduate. Okay, when are you supposed to meet each of these requirement? Okay, so bila 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 semua ni, you have to know your program well, your PhD program very well. Okay, itu kita dah cakap tentang benda-benda yang uh, biasa kita lalui. So now I nak masuk dekat the five chapters. Nak tak nak. Uh, buat PhD ni adalah uh, biasanya this is very typical okay uh, untuk lima chapter mungkin uh, bidang yang lain mungkin dia ada lebih daripada lima chapter tapi uh, asas dia this five you cannot run away okay uh, ada rakan saya yang buat sejarah dia sampai sepuluh chapter okay tapi dalam sepuluh tu tetap ada this five Um, uh, important things. Okay, so let us look at uh, kenapa saya warnakan uh, merah acknowledgement, content dengan references. Okay, uh, kita go through dulu acknowledgement, content, table, apa semua tu dekat depan tesis kita kan. Lepas tu kita ada introduction, kita ada literature review, kita ada methodology, kita ada findings and analysis dan uh, akhir sekali kita ada summary, conclusion and recommendation and the last part of the thesis adalah references. Okay, uh, biasanya saya sangat-sangat menggalakkan rakan-rakan semua yang uh, baru ataupun yang dah lama uh, mula uh, belajar untuk buat PhD ni, you must have a mock thesis. Okay, a mock thesis maknanya you ambil lah satu folder, you tulislah kat depan itu nama universiti, nama you dan 20-26 graduate. Okay. Tulis kat situ nama you, uh, Azarina Ano, Dr. Azarina, Dr. Muhammad Rafi, uh, 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 Dr. Suryani, okay? uh, Dr. Siti Zubaida. Tulis kat situ. Tapi janganlah tunjuk kat orang, janganlah tunjuk dekat Facebook ke Instagram ke. Okay? That is for kita punya. Okay? That is for us, kita sendiri. Okay, so buatkan file ataupun whatever, uh, tulis kat situ and then dalam tu kita isi chapter 1, uh, acknowledgement, content, introduction sampai references. Walaupun kita tinggalkan every section tu masih lagi kosong for the beginners. Okay, yang paling senang sekali nak tulis within these five chapters adalah acknowledgement. Mengantuk-mengantuk tu kan tak tahu apa nak buat tu tulislah acknowledgement. Oh, thesis ini saya tujukan kepada suami saya yang tersayang dan anak-anak saya. Senang kan nak tulis yang itu? Okay, uh, buat ibu dan ayah, uh, apalah yang 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 dia, dia tak tak perlukan rujukan, dia tak perlukan apa. Okay, in a way, when you start to write, you have the flair. You have the, apa nama, momentum nak menulis. Okay, lepas tu you buatlah konten walaupun tak ada apa kat dalam tu. Kita nak apa? Nak pujuk diri kita ni supaya eh I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm I'm ready to to do this PhD. Okay, ni orang kampung semua dah tahu dah ni. Ya. Yeah? Ha. Apa tu uh, nama uh, apa tu matrix yang universiti bagi dah gantung dekat kereta. Okay, stickers dah ada kat depan uh, cermin kereta. Ya, yeah, satu kampung dah tahu. Weh, jangan main-main buat PhD ni ada masanya tak nak balik kampung tau sebab definitely orang akan tanya kau PhD sampai mana? Okay, especially kalau kita ambil full scholarship. Okay, hurdle orang ambil full scholarship ni ialah uh, Mak mentua dia ingat dia cuti sebab suami ataupun isteri dia kata oh uh, dapat biasiswa cuti tiga tahun jadi dia ingat cuti tiga tahun tu macam cuti bekerja. Ha tu kena ingat tu kena jaga. Eh? 
there is no istilah cuti actually. Okay, dalam hal ini saya nasihatkan kalau ada pasangan yang nak belajar tu uh, biar gile-gile. Ha, biar gile-gile belajar. Jangan sekali suami isteri belajar, anak belajar. Oh, payah nanti. Okay. Hmm, betul Amin. Cakap dengan diri sendiri. Okay. So, masa saya dulu, kan saya anak ramai. Jadi, uh, uh, dajah satu sampai dajah enam tu, masa primary school, dajah dua je tak ada dekat sekolah tu. Dajah lain semua ada. Dajah satu ada, dajah tiga, dajah empat, dajah lima, dajah enam. Kemudian naik sekolah menengah, form 1, form 3, form 4, form 5, semua ada. Okay, so dia berlawan-lawan nanti. So biar, uh, you you have to discuss with your spouse ataupun sesiapa sahaja yang uh, rapat dengan you, macam mana nak buat. Okay, especially kalau kita dah ada pasangan, we have to sit down and discuss. Okay, siapa nak buat dulu. Okay, macam kes saya, um, masa saya kahwin dengan suami saya, suami saya dah graduate master's, saya masih lagi belajar degree. Tapi akhirnya dia kata ladies first. Uh, saya buat PhD dulu, a few years after I graduated, baru dia graduate uh, PhD dia. Okay, alright. Kemudian uh, introduction. Apa ada dalam introduction? Chapter 1. Introduction chapter ni nampaknya tajuk tu introduction tetapi dia seolah-olah macam the heart of the thesis. Okay, dalam introduction ada uh, dalam introduction ada problem statement, ada background of the study, ada objective of the study, purpose of the study, the hypothesis, maybe kita ada Uh, mungkin tak ada hipotesis, mungkin ada hipotesis. Okay, kemudian kita ada uh, definitions, operational definitions. Some universities dia perlukan uh, conceptual framework dalam uh, chapter one. Ada universiti dia perlukan research framework dalam chapter one. Therefore, bila kita nak buat uh, PhD, we must go to the graduate school ataupun kita kena semak uh, graduate school uh, apa dia nak. What are the things that uh, required for you untuk uh, enroll dalam uh, PhD program dia? Okay, mungkin uh, problem statement dia cuma nak satu muka surat setengah. Lepas tu you refer dekat kawan dekat UM, dekat UM dia perlukan empat muka. So you have to know, okay, where you stand. Alright, so saya nak ingatkan dekat sini bahawa problem statement tu adalah Uh, satu benda yang bukan satu benda yang mudah tapi uh, belum pula ada orang mati sebab buat problem statement ni kan uh, so uh, problem statement ni selalunya kalau kita baca buku kalau kita dapat selesaikan masalah problem statement ni it I would say that half of your PhD work is done okay tapi nak dapatkan a good problem statement is no joke. Okay, macam example I bagi, I have uh, I have presented 15 times, 15 kali saya bentang problem statement sahaja di hadapan uh, supervisory committee saya. Okay, uh, itu baru nak proposal baru. Okay, so once problem statement settle, Uh, definitely your objective will uh, settle as well, your research question also will settle. Okay, next ialah literature review. Literature review ni adalah satu benda yang non-stop. Okay, dia non-stop. Dari awal sampai ke akhir, dia perlu dilaksanakan. It is a continuous work. Okay, and Uh, you have to uh, you have to keep abreast with the latest uh, knowledge with the latest model theories of your interest okay so saya cadangkan uh, even even ya yeah, kita nak nak dapatkan problem statement pun should be supported with some literatures kita nak come out with our conceptual framework definitely it has to come from uh, apa ni, from your literature. Okay, 
So literature review is an ongoing process in doing your PhD. Okay, why? Because even in your chapter five, you need your literature to support your findings. Okay, to show that your research is rigor enough, intensive enough. Okay, so I would suggest that literature review ni kita buat literature metrics. Okay, um, actually, uh, actually, uh, PhD in the making ni adalah satu siri. Okay, uh, ini adalah baru introduction. I won't be able to show you uh, in detail uh, every every chapter. Okay, uh, uh, saya akan menawarkan nanti. Um, PhD in the making series ni, uh, writing a problem statement. So I will spend the whole session um, uh, sharing with you um, apa ni, semak kerja kita how nak tulis uh, uh, problem statement. Okay, lepas tu biasanya kalau saya buat bila kita dah settle problem statement, we go straight to uh, the objective of the uh, apa nama uh, research as and finally the research question and maybe the hypothesis and uh, itu kita akan uh, announcekan from time to time lah ya yeah? again uh, even you want to come out with a hypothesis it has to come from your literature review it has to come from the literature okay as uh, in contrast to a qualitative research okay the hypothesis appear at the end of the research okay in chapter five because qualitative research is not to test theories is not to make um, uh, intellectual guess instead to produce hypothesis in chapter five okay uh, kalau quantitative not necessarily to always have hypothesis okay but I, uh, the, the thing that I would like to emphasize here is that the hypothesis should also originated from literature, generated from the literature. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Boleh share tak? Anna boleh. Who is that? Suryani. Ah, Suryani. Uh, Dr. Okay. Uh, my experience was uh, because I want to do my problem statement uh, chapter. So mm -hmm. before that, I did a, a, a small thesis, uh, sorry, uh, uh, research mm -hmm. just to prove that the problem really happened. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So in the end, I can quote myself in the mm -hmm. thesis uh, mm -hmm. saying that, okay, this problem happened because I have done the research, the mini research. All right. All right. Thank you, Suryani. Kalau kita baca buku, kita tak akan jumpa uh, idea macam ni. Okay. Tapi bila kita buat PhD, kita kena smart. Okay. Macam mana ni? Especially when we want to show that the problem is very domestic. The problem is very local. Okay. Betul tak, Suryani? And we a lack of uh, apa nama literatures. Okay, so one way out is to uh, come up with a mini project, a mini research to support you punya problem. That's very true. Okay, um, ataupun uh, kalau saya dalam qualitative research, kita panggil preliminary data collection di mana uh, you want to um, support to strengthen your problem. Okay, all right. Uh, anybody else would like to share? And uh, to some of my colleagues, Deda Biasa Dengar, I would like to share how I obtain my problem statement. I gain my problem statement, okay? Once upon a time, uh, macam cerita apa tu? Macam cerita Cinderella pula, eh? Okay, uh, I was sitting in a cafe dekat university. It's a normal practice, okay? Uh, suddenly, I ternampak. I was in my uh, almost second year of doing my PhD. Saya ternampak a group of uh, female uh, students, okay. Uh, dan saya perhatikan dia. 
uh, there's nothing new with that group of uh, female students tapi pada hari itu saya lihat dia dengan cara yang berbeza dia pakai tudung okey tapi dia pakai t-shirt lengan pendek dan bajunya sangat ketat dan seluarnya juga ketat okey so saya pun fikir adakah budak ni dia tahu tutup aurat tu wajib it's a compulsory for a muslim um, uh, female saya jawab sendiri because dalam falsafah biasanya kita akan tanya soalan dan kita jawab sendiri okey mestilah dia tahu sebab tu dia pakai tudung okey tapi kenapa dia pakai tudung tapi pakai baju lengan pendek yang bajunya ketat dan seluarnya ketat what is wrong where is wrong who is wrong Okay, saya sangat gembira kerana pada hari itu saya dah dapat saya punya problem Gila kan buat PhD ni dapat problem sangat gembira Orang tak nak problem Okay, so saya sangat gembira sebab Ada masalah antara kefahaman, pemikiran, the value, the belief the attitude atau dalam Islam kita panggil ilmu, iman dan amal ada masalah dekat situ ok so saya pun tinggalkan makanan ni saya balik sebab saya rasa saya macam dah graduate sebab dah dapat problem sebenarnya belum lagi tapi dah dapat dah idea what is um, really I want to study Okay, keep on asking, kenapa orang buat apa yang dia buat? Kenapa orang tak buat apa yang sepatutnya dia buat? You can also ask the same question in relation to your field. Okay, kalau dalam counselling macam Amin, kenapa counsellor yang paling banyak masalah? Sedangkan dia ada knowledge tentang counselling. Okay, kenapa dia tak buat apa yang dia sepatutnya buat? Alright, okay, so That is one way of uh, apa tu identification of your uh, problem. Okay. Next, we go to methodology. Last week I did share in uh, in uh, another online CPD talking on uh, qualitative research. Okay. Please don't uh, uh, predetermine the method you want to use until you know what you want to study. Okay. Kaedah ni dia bergantung kepada apa yang kita nak kaji It is not based on apa yang orang nak But purely kajian kita ni perlukan method yang macam mana Adakah perlu secara kuantitatif ataupun kualitatif Ataupun a mix of both ataupun action research ataupun apa Okay, it is the nature of the research yang you nak buat, the, the purpose of your study, the objective of your study will determine whether your study is to be conducted quantitatively, qualitatively or is a mixed. Okay, so not to worry too much on this, okay. Oh, masa saya belajar dulu, saya ada duduk sebelah seorang apa nama orang tentera yang dah bersara ni apa dia panggil lieutenant ke apa awal-awal lagi dia kata I'm phobia with statistics I tak boleh statistik so I tak nak ambil kelas statistics betul-betul research dia perlukan statistics you like it or not you have to go through it okay same thing happened to me I thought I am very good in numbers I want to do my research quantitatively when the nature of my research, the purpose of my research really, really require qualitative. Okay, so in the methodology chapter, kita akan dapat design, okay, reka bentuk, reka bentuk apa kita nak guna selain daripada mula-mula uh, kita dah decide ka kaedah kaedah kuanti ataupun kuali ataupun mix. Kemudian kita akan uh, tahu desain apa kita nak guna. Eksperimen ke, quasi ke, uh, phenomenological ke, grounded theory ke. Setelah kita identify the kaedah, 
kita identify the reka bentuk. Okay. Lepas kita dah identify reka bentuk, we have to identify the population, the sample and kalau dalam quantitative, it is the instrument. Kalau dalam qualitative, the researcher is the instrument. So you don't have to worry about finding instrument in doing qualitative research because you, the researcher, is the instrument. Okay? Sample, population. Kalau dalam qualitative, Sharon Merriam 2015 kata, even the big N is equal to one, is permissible, is allowed in doing qualitative research. Okay? In contrast to quantitative research, it is a numbers, the bigger, the merrier. Okay, so um, uh, population, sample, okay, kalau dalam uh, qualitative, sampling ni biasanya purposeful. Purposeful meaning you pergi cari orang yang boleh bagi you information with the criteria you yourself set it up okay because you are the researcher you are the instrument you know what you want to research okay so dalam qualitative dia macam tu but in quantitative there are things that you have to go through for example you have to find uh, i would advise you cari instrument yang dah ready made yang dah established yang dah ada cronback alpha dia dah ada dia punya keboleh percayaan reliability and the validity okay unless you decided to uh, membangunkan instrument dalam phd work you okay so gunakanlah apa yang dah sedia ada Okay, so chapter 4, kita akan ada findings and analysis. Okay, terpulang kalau you guna quantitative, what kind of statistics are you using? Okay, what uh, what kind of, apa tu, ada orang guna SAM, ada guna AMOS, apa semua kan? So in chapter 4, you have to um, uh, disclose your uh, findings and also you will start doing your analysis. Okay, this is uh, very interesting for me because after working chapter 1, 2, 3, uh, chapter 4 will tell you almost the results of your hard work for the last few years. Okay, so um, chapter 5 is where you have to write your summary and conclusion. Normally, uh, saya tengok uh, orang ada masalah bila buat conclusion out of nowhere okay dia buat conclusion yang tak ada kena mengena dengan uh, research dia okay so conclusion kita mestilah related to your uh, findings okay you buat kajian tentang benda lain tapi you punya conclusion benda lain okay and also Recommendation also mestilah diambil daripada findings. Okay, apalah guna kita buat uh, kajian, kita dah dapat uh, uh, findings kita dalam kajian, lepas tu kita recommend benda bukan-bukan. Oh, cikgu-cikgu ni kena pergi uh, latihan. Padahal kita tak kaji pun. Okay, so always remember when we come to uh, a recommendation, conclusion, it has to always Okay, it has to always, bukan all, memang kena uh, align with your uh, research findings. Okay, so far ada question tak? Ada sesiapa nak, nak mencela? Suryani, uh, how's everything? Ni ada dua uh, tiga Suryani ni. Uh -huh. Ya, yeah, Suryani Yusof. Uh, InsyaAllah waiting for uh, submission and bye bye. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Okay. I got to know this Suryani memang very hard working. Orang ni comel, kecil tapi um, again, you must agree with me Suryani. It is the, the determination in you. Okay. Tak ada siapa pun boleh uh, apa tu 
boleh halang ataupun apa but it is you. Okay, it is inside you. Betul. Okay. Uh, Puan Siva, you dah sampai mana Siva? Mana Siva tak ada. Okay, anybody else Sarina? Yeah, ada, ada. Okay. Ha. okay. Ha. Siva dah sampai Puan mana? Siva. Ya, yeah, I dah hantar pada uh, penyelis saya untuk saya makan akhir. Lepas tu, right, kalau betul -betul, betul -betul, I have to do again. Alright, uh, alright. alright. Uh, Don't worry. Okay. What PhD ni, kena marah, kena tegur tu is normal. Okay, cuma kekuatan kita secara fizikal, secara mental, secara emosional kita nak berhadapan dengan teguran-teguran itu. Okey. Hmm, ada orang tanya nak dapatkan dekat mana. Nanti eh, bila saya dah nak habis nanti saya akan tunjukkan uh, apa tu QR code-nya ya. Yeah. Alright. Uh, apa saya cakap tadi? <laughs> buat 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 apa tu uh, kesilapan dalam buat tesis ni memang biasa. Okey. Bila supervisor uh, okey Uh, saya tak nak masuk bab yang tu dulu nanti lepas ni. Okay the last thing yang ada dalam kita punya thesis nanti adalah references. This is very very important. Okay. Sebenarnya semua important. Tapi untuk references ni whatever your reading material yang you jumpa please record it. Okay. By all means you kena tulis it somewhere. That's why tadi kalau I kata you dah buat mock thesis itu always record it. Okay. Sebab apa? Kita tak tahu one day one of the uh, uh, apa bahan bacaan yang you baca tu really really uh, vital and it is very very strong to contribute to your study tapi you tak boleh detect benda tu datang daripada mana. You dah tak boleh trace. And then what happen masa tu? You are wasting your time. Untuk trace balik. Okay, I still remember when I did my PhD dulu, ada seorang rakan, dia buat grounded theory, Dr. Nohayati Alwi. Okay, uh, dia kata, Hasna, kak sedang mandi, terpaksa keluar ni nak tanya you, you ingat tak bahan yang uh, kita bincang hari tu, sumbernya kat mana? <coughs> ha. You bayangkan, okay, jangan main-main benda ni. Right, so I would remind you whatever reading material yang you jumpa, yang you rasa penting, please record it. Okay, that's why bila kita buat literature matrix, kita lebih selamat sebab dalam literature, literature, uh, literature review matrix, kita akan register nama penulis, Tahunnya, jurnal apa ke, buku apa ke, proceeding ke, findingsnya, eh? Okay, so that is uh, one uh, reminder lah kalau kita uh, dah mula nak nak menulis. Okay. Now, saya nak nak cakap tentang ni. Kenapa lambat sangat ni? Tak habis habis belajar ni. Supervisor I, okay? Uh, supervisor I teruk kejap suruh tukar cundak ni ni. Cuba kita fikir. Sepatutnya kita manage supervisor ke supervisor manage kita? We are all adult. Sepatutnya kita yang manage supervisor kita. I learn this from my experience. Yang tadi saya cakap, saya terpaksa bentang 15 kali problem statement, rupanya cuma yang ke-15 tu Baru my professor betul-betul tengok. Maknanya kita sebagai student in a denial I would say. Okay. Sekarang ni kita semua dah ada kemudahan macam ni. So we have to manage our supervisor. Because kita bayar dia. Okay. Kita berhak untuk dapat apa yang sepatutnya kita dapat daripada dia. Especially dia punya expertise. Okay, so uh, nak cari supervisor ataupun advisor ni pun kena ada art juga. Okay, pick an advisor which is well known in the field. Ada pro and cons dekat sini. Definitely kalau kita ambil profesor yang sangat terkenal, dia akan damn busy. Dia sangat sibuk dan dia ada mungkin ramai sangat 
pelajar PhD di bawah dia untuk dia selia dan akhirnya supervision tak dapat dilakukan dengan baik. Okay, I would suggest that pick an advisor which is expert in the field. Tak payahlah yang popular ke yang apa tapi dia boleh membantu kita in terms of uh, content. Okay, identify dia. Kita kan ada directory of expertise, kita boleh tengok siapa advisor ataupun pensyarah yang uh, itu. Uh, ada orang tanya, lelaki ke perempuan ke matters or not? It depends on the situation. Okay. Uh, in my case, I have five supervisory committee and only one female. Okay. Uh, sincerely, I check up dengan you bahawa working with a female uh, advisor or supervisor ni lebih mudah bagi saya lah. That is from my experience. Maybe it does not apply to you. Okay. Um, so, uh, tengoklah macam mana. Yeah. Okay, next. Junior advisors may spend more time with you but may lack experience. Saya dah tengok juga rakan-rakan kita yang pergi belajar bila kita tanya uh, siapa you punya supervisor, oh dia baru aja grad PhD dia tiga tahun yang lepas, empat tahun yang lepas. Biasanya, biasanya lah ya, uh, mungkin you agree, mungkin you disagree. Uh, apa nama supervisor yang muda-muda ni dia semangat dia kuat tau. Ha, dia dia nak you buat macam dia kena. Macam supervisor dia buat dia. Ha, okay. There is a possibility to happen that way. Okay. So, uh, kita kena ada seni lah untuk uh, tackle supervisor kita. Kita nak dapatkan supervisor kita. Okay. Senior advisors may be too busy again. This is uh, applicable to the first one as well. Okay, senior advisors may be too busy. Bayangkan bawah dia ada 20 orang untuk disupervise PhD-nya. Can you imagine? Fitrahnya manusia ni boleh ke? Eh? Okay, look how successful their previous students are. Okay. Oh ni dalam bahasa sekarang ni kita kata tengok kepada testimoni, uh, testimonial uh, pensyarah tu, okay, profesor tu. Yeah. Okay, get feedback from the current students. Okay, cubalah risik-risik pada student. Tetapi bila kita tanya, uh, we have to be very open. Tak semestinya apa yang kita dapat maklumat daripada student tu betul semua. Okay, maybe kita tanya pada student yang memang bermasalah. Maka kita akan mengatakan, oh I don't want this student sebab, I don't want this professor sebab ramai orang fail dengan dia. Okay, tapi you can consider. Okay, you can consider. Right. Uh, last but not the least, learn about their supervision style. Uh, kita nak duduk dengan dia 3-4 tahun Kita kena tahu dia tu macam mana okay, Kita kena tahu uh, dia tu macam mana uh, Itu dia panggil apa? Uh, commercial break Ada tak siapa-siapa nak menyampuk ke apa ke tentang supervision ni? Doi, silap silap. You are presenting. Saya uh, pernah lah pergi jumpa supervisor, one of them, the female one. Pukul sembilan saya pergi, kemudian dia simpan saya sampai pukul tiga petang. Do you know what? Apa yang dia buat dengan saya? Membetulkan sentence structure saya. Oh ini past ten, ini ada S, ini ada ED. Takit tak? Sakit kan? 
habis saja saya jumpa dia saya terjumpa my main professor a uh, suhasna so macam mana tadi jumpa dengan doktor ni 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 doktor saya nak berhenti lah buat PhD ni ha kenapa dia kata yalah daripada pukul 9 sampai pukul 3 simpan saya just to correct my grammar just to correct my sentence structure apa yang kita nak daripada supervisor kita adalah substance okey the content dia punya expertise dan kita ada right untuk dapat benda tu okey be uh, bear in mind kalau kita pun jadi supervisor kepada pelajar kita tak kiralah supervisor untuk uh, kerja khusus ke uh, thesis uh, project ke apa ke kita mesti supervise dia betul-betul okey dan jangan uh, bagi dia wrong advice okey uh, wrong advice ni pun bahaya juga yang akhirnya menyebabkan student tu tak graduate student tu tak dapat apa yang sepatutnya dia dapat okey so insyaallah in future saya akan buat uh, satu uh, online CPD tentang uh, super supervision and supervise okey penyelia dan penyeliaan okey so i believe that Uh, semua kita yang sedang belajar ni memang ada isu dengan supervisor okay? Tapi uh, apa yang uh, saya nak ingatkan dekat sini ialah I would like to emphasize here For the students to manage dia punya supervisor okay? From day one, you have to show that you care about every uh, moment yang you ada okay? Jangan senang-senang kita datang dari jauh sampai dekat pintu dia sorry i'm out of office okay so kita tak nak macam tu so we have to manage our supervisor okay ada sesiapa nak tambah tentang supervisor supervisory saya dulu saya ambil orang untuk method satu untuk content satu untuk uh, apa tu uh, method tu ada kualitatif lepas tu ada yang pakar dalam sampling kemudian ada yang pakar dalam content so ada lima orang saya punya dan saya import seorang daripada UIA actually saya menyusahkan diri saya okey saya menyusahkan diri saya tapi alhamdulillah lah akhirnya berjaya juga okey hmm. so uh, you 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 have the right Ramai uh, pelajar, rakan-rakan uh, kita yang pergi belajar ni dia tanya, doktor, uh, supervisor saya macam ni, eh you pay for them, okay, you have the right untuk fire dia, get a new one, oh nanti faculty blacklist kita, ha, itulah dia kita, kita bukan cerita tentang emosi, kita cerita tentang the academic work, the scholarly work itu, okay, kalau professor tu tak boleh uh, perform, So why should we waste our time, money, effort untuk dia? Okay, I would advise you uh, you to think about it. Okay, hmm, tapi bukan senang ya eh, nak buat decision tu sebab ada juga rasa takut tu. But for your information, you have the right. Okay, you have the right untuk uh, pilih. Okay, this is the thing that I tak nak cakap pun sebenarnya. Okay, but I think it worth sharing here. Dah dapat dah biasiswa, okay? Kawan kita tak dapat, kita dapat. But, kita tak perform, okay? So, uh, daripada satu buku yang saya baca yang ditulis oleh Phillips dan juga Park ini, uh, dia meng menggariskan um, seven ways of not getting a PhD ataupun seven ways. Uh, ada ada juga cara tak nak dapat PhD ni, ya? Yeah? Okay, number satu, actually tak nak pun buat sebab pengarah you suruh, sebab ada orang suruh you pun apply saja-saja suka-suka kebetulan tak ada orang apply maka you dapat ah ni ni ini ini yang bangsa yang tak tahu lah nak kata kategori apa ni eh okey for sure you tak akan dapat okey number two, cara yang kedua tak nak dapat PhD ni ialah uh, overestimating what is required ah And then other underestimating what is required. 
Lepas tu having a supervisor who does not know what is required Ini paling teruk Okay, sebab tu tadi saya kata We have to manage our supervisor Sometimes supervisor kita tak update They, they did not be informed abreast with the latest development from the graduate school Okay, oh graduate school dah tukar ya macam ni, macam ni Dia masih lagi pakai rujukan yang lama Okay, losing contact with your supervisor Sekarang masa zaman saya dulu tak ada canggih-canggih WhatsApp apa ni So susah sikit nak communicate Zaman sekarang ni saya nampak ada kawan saya tu Alamak doktor, supervisor saya typing Kan kita nampak kan dekat WhatsApp tu Alamak Okay, actually we should be very very happy Bila kita dapat news daripada supervisor kita Okay So please don't lose contact dengan supervisor kita Okay, manage our supervisor Alright, uh, next seven ways of not getting a PhD ialah Not having a thesis as in position or argument to maintain uh, Dia ni macam lalang Kedap cakap macam ni, kedap cakap macam ni Lepas tu orang nasihat tak nak dengar Okay, uh, kita bagi idea uh, Dia kata supervisor dia tak nak macam ni Lepas tu dia cakap dengan kita, supervisor dia uh, banyak masalah Eh apa benda dia ni? Okay, uh, so this is a signal that actually you don't want to have your PhD ha, Senang je cakap macam tu Okay, hmm. lepas tu uh, another one yang di outlinekan oleh Philips ni adalah Taking a new job before completing Okay, tak habis lagi Dah Uh, tukar kerja ke Ni uh, berkaitan dengan ini kan Saya nak ingatkan lah Kalau kita sedang buat PhD kan Kalau boleh Jangan pindah rumah Jangan pindah rumah baru Because Moving to a new house is no joke Okay You spend hours, energy, time Effort semua tu Think of lampu apa nak guna Dinding apa nak pakai Dapur apa nak letak Oh no Avoid that for the next uh, three, four years Tak payahlah pindah rumah dulu Okay, unless ada orang boleh buatkan untuk you Okay Kalau uh, orang lelaki dia nak kahwin kali kedua pun jangan buat waktu ni <laughs> Okay, avoid unnecessary things tu Okay, lagi apa lagi? Uh, beli kereta baru Haa ah. Duit biasiswa banyak kan? So boleh buat instalment ha. So jangan, avoid Avoid unnecessary uh, problems yang might occur along the way Okay uh, Saya nak tambah sikit uh, uh, On top of Philips outline ni uh, Ialah Apa yang saya belajar daripada profesor saya Profesor Dr. Hamdan Dia kata Stop giving excuses Stop giving excuses Think of excuses As well as creating excuses Itu saya tak boleh lupa This is very true Sebab Masa towards the end of my PhD work dulu uh, I lost my my baby Okay Saya berhenti belajar Full stop Saya tak mau belajar lagi When I only have another 10% of my PhD work The following year, I miscarriage pula Okay So that thing, uh, I rasa satu dunia boleh terima bahawa uh, I tak payah belajar lagi Okay, I have a very good reason I have a solid excuses for not continuing my PhD work Even ada uh, my uh, supervisory committee tu datang kat rumah pucuk saya Okay, please dia kata Hasna you have um, you have only a few more percent untuk complete Until I met this uh, professor Dr. Hamdan Dia kata I shit you Hasna, dia kata because anak you meninggal whatever happened to you InsyaAllah anak you masuk syurga but I can guarantee you you not going to get your PhD Ha, termenung saya masa tu And saya balik Dan saya fikir I change my mind Dan saya work it out 
Dan akhirnya saya berjaya. So, itulah yang saya ingat Dr. Hamdan kata, stop giving excuses. Tolong jangan bagi alasan. Because you're not going to get what you're supposed to get. Bagilah apa alasan pun. Satu dunia iktiraf. Alasan yang kita bagi. You're not going to get your PhD. Okay, so itu adalah uh, perkongsian uh, daripada pengalaman saya. Dan juga, jangan terlalu mengharapkan orang lain. Jangan terlalu mengharapkan orang lain. Kerana PhD is yours. Okay, I know it is very lonely but it is yours. Okay. Ha, ni dia. Zaman saya dulu susah. Okay, saya kena duduk kat library. Pagi saya kena pergi library. Lepas tu masuk kelas balik. Tapi sekarang ni, no more. Everything at your finger hands. Fingertips. Okay. How many of you would say that uh, you punya seronoknya membaca tu Ah, sorry lah, ni bulan puasa. Seronoknya membaca tu up to the extent that I boleh buat analogi dia macam uh, enjoying your Baskin Robin butter pecan ice cream under a hot sun. How many of you would say that membaca tu macam tu seronoknya? Okay? Ah, kalau you dah sampai kat level macam tu, insya Allah tak ada masalah. Okay, sebab sekarang ni uh, nak bahan bacaan banyak e-book, e-journal, e-research, e-dissertation, e-TC, semua the e-e ni banyak. Okay, boleh print, 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 print. Tapi yang paling penting sekali is go back to your reading work. You must enjoy reading. Daripada chapter 1, daripada acknowledgement sampai ke references, required you to do a lot of reading. Okay? Ada tak sesiapa yang boleh kata dia dah sampai level macam makan ais krim, Baskin Robin tu, membaca ni, oh lama nampak buku, buku tu macam telio sangat. Ha. Ya, kena macam tu. Semangat nak membaca tu macam tu. Jangan sampai tak boleh tidur, ambil jurnal baca. Ha, sebagai ubat untuk tidur pula. Okay, that is not supposed to happen. You have to enjoy reading. Pada awal ni memang jurnal ni tulis apa eh. Tak seronok. Tapi bila you um, get close to it, used to it, you will enjoy the journals. Okay, you will miss the journals. Okay. Uh, ini saya jumpa dalam The Economist. It was uh, firstly uh, published in 2005 and then republished in 2010. Why doing a PhD is often a waste of time. This is another excuse saya rasa yang bila saya tengok ni, dia punya komen-komen tu memang mereka mengutuk lah penulis yang tidak berani mengenengahkan nama dia ni ya. Uh, dia kata uh, buat PhD ni buang duit je. Buang duit, buang masa. Okay. So, uh, ada juga orang yang berfikiran begini. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Dan last but not the least, uh, these are the three books that I refer for this course. Then uh, for those who are interested to keep in touch with the book, uh, you are most welcome and uh, contact me with the number that I've given just now. And I will show you later. Um, Uh, where I can share you this book uh, and I hope this book will give you more ideas on how about doing PhD. Okay, so um, before uh, kita berakhir, um, saya nak tanya, should you have any question to ask? Okay, um, juga PhD ni adalah um, satu perjalanan, satu proses, dia bukannya thesis tu yang kita nak tapi the process. Okay. It is very lonely but it worth. Okay. Sangat, sangat um, worth. Um, worth apa? Uh, berfaedah, ber, bermanfaat. Okay. Uh, 
um, dan uh, I provide here my phone number. Should you have any question, you can always contact me. And these are my um, ada berapa orang anak saya kat sini? Dua, empat, enam. Uh, sembilan orang anak saya yang ada dekat sini masa saya graduate. They are all grown up already. Okay. So, uh, bagi saya buat PhD ni bukan sahaja kita menjadi contoh kepada rakan-rakan kita but for our family. Dan saat uh, gambar ini diambil, anak saya yang sulung ni tingkat talima, Alhamdulillah dia dapat straight A masa tu. Lepas tu anak yang ketiga ni uh, buat PMR, dia dapat straight A juga dan yang uh, this boy dia dapat um, UPSR dia straight A. Okay, so I really enjoy being with you and I really hope that Kenapa saya tulis 2026 dekat sini? Because I want everybody who enroll in this course today will come back in 2026 with a PhD. Okay? Boleh promise dengan saya and talk to yourself that you will get your PhD.